good afternoon students welcome back to the rotary channel we are with our seventh chapter that is physiology and injuries in sports sports physiology is the study of the long and short term effects of training and body conditions of the athletes it is a study of how exercise or sport activity alters the function and structure of our body as a matter of fact when we take part in games and sports or do physical exercise certain physiological changes such as aerobic capacity muscle composition size muscles intensity of the nerve impulses lactic acid tolerance muscular strain stroke volume heartbeat blood pressure etc takes place these physiological changes are witnessed both in young population and in the aged people also the topics that which we are going to study in this unit are physiological factors determining the components of physical fitness second one is effect of exercise on cardio respiratory system third is effect of exercise on muscular system fourth physiological changes due to aging fifth sports injuries classification cause and preventions in sixth point we are going to study the treatment of injuries and the last one is first aid in which we are going to study the aims and objectives of first aid the first point is physiological factors determining the components of physical fitness there are various physical that is physiological factors that determine the components of physical fitness such as strength speed endurance flexibility and etc the various physiological factors that determine physical fitness we will elaborate it in detail next physiological factor determining the component of physical fitness is strength in which the first point is muscle composition each muscle consists of basically two types of muscle fibers fast twitch fibers and slow twitch fibers the fast twitch fibers are capable to contract faster and therefore they can produce more force on the contrary the slow twitch fibers are not capable of contracting faster although they are capable of contracting for a longer duration the muscle which have more percentage of fast twitch fibers can produce more strength the percentage of fast twitch fibers and slow twitch fibers is genetically determined and cannot be changed through training so it can be said that the percentage of these fibers determines the strength of a person the next point in strength is size of the muscles the strength of the muscles largely depend upon the size of the muscle it is well known factor that bigger and larger muscles can produce more force the force produced by the same size of muscles in males and females is approximately same but males are found to be stronger because they have large and bigger muscles in comparison to that of the females with the help of different methods strength training such as weight training the size of muscles training uh, the muscles can be increased and thereby the strength is improved so the strength is determined by the size of the muscles the next point is body weight it is also a well known fact that the individual who have heavier are generally stronger than the individuals who are lighter there is positive correlation between body weight and strength among international weightlifters the heavier weightlifter lifts heavy weights so the body weight also determines the strength of an individual and the last point on strength is the intensity of the nerve impulse a muscle is composed of number of motor units the total force of the muscle depends on the number of contracting motor units whenever a stronger nerve impulse from central nervous system excite more number of motor units the muscle will contract more strongly or it can be said that the muscles will produce more force or strength so the intensity of the nerve impulse also determines the amount of strength this was all about the strength the next important physiological factor is determining speed 
Speed is the next component of physical fitness which is determined by the physiological factors such as mobility and nerve system. Our muscle contracts and relax at the maximum possible speed. As seen in sprinting events, the rapid contraction and relaxation of muscles is made possible by rapid excitation and inhibition of concerned motor centers. This is called the mobility of the nerve system. The nerve system can maintain this rapid excitation and inhibition only for a few seconds. After which, the excitation spreads to a neighboring centers causing tension in the entire body. This results in decrease in the speed. Next one is muscle composition. Muscle with a greater percentage of fast twitch fibers contracts with more speed in comparison to the muscles with the lower percentage of fast twitch fibers. This we have studied in the previous points. Next point we are going to study is explosive strength. For every quick and explosive movement, explosive strength is indispensable. For example, a quick punch in the boxing cannot be delivered if the boxer lacks explosive strength. Explosive strength further depends on the muscle composition, muscle size and muscle coordination. It also depends upon the metabolic process except muscle composition. The remaining factor can be improved through training which in turn will improve the speed to the limited extent. This implies that the top sprinters have more percentage of fast twitch fibers whereas endurance athletes have more percentage of slow twitch fibers. The next point is flexibility. Flexibility also de determines the speed to a certain extent. In fact, good flexibility allows maximum range of movements without much internal resistance. Flexibility also enables complete utilization of explosive strength. The last point in speed is biochemical reserve and metabolic power. For maximum speed performance, the muscle requires more amount of energy at a very high rate of consumption. For this purpose, the phosphogenes adenosine triphosphate that is ATP and creatine phosphate stored in the muscle should be enough. If ATP and CP store is less in contracting muscles, the muscle contractions due to the insufficient energy supply become slow after a short time. The energy supply also depends on certain enzymes which increase the metabolic power. The amount of ATP, CP and rate of energy supply can be enhanced by training. Therefore, it can be said that the biological, biochemical reserve, reserves and metabolic power determines the speed. The next physiological factor determining the speed is flexibility, the range of movement possible at a joint of or the flexibility depends upon a number of factors. There are some of the factors which are not trainable but some factors are trainable to a certain extent. The various factors which determine the flexibility are muscle strength, joint structure, age and gender, stretchability of muscles, internal environment and previous energies. In which muscle strength Muscle strength should have a minimum level of strength to make the movements possible, especially against gravity or external force. In sprint sports, the legs or the knees cannot be lifted to require height or ankle if their related muscles are weak. In fact, weak muscles can become a limiting factor for achieving high range of movements. Muscle strength is highly trainable and therefore can enhance flexibility. Second one is joint structure. There are various types of joints in the human body. Some of the joints intrinsically have a greater range of motion than others. For example, the ball and the socket joints of the shoulder has the greatest range of motion in comparison to that of the knee joints. The next point is age and gender. It is well known fact that the flexibility decreases with the age. However, human body is trainable. Flexibility can be enhanced with the help of training as strength and endurance are enhanced. Gender also determines flexibility. 
female trends to be more flexible than that of the males. You can observe that we have yoga in our school and our yogis are more flexible than the rest, than the normal without practicing athletes. The next point is stretchability of muscles. The stretchability of the muscle is also a factor in limiting the range of movements. For making any movement at a joint, the muscle must contract to execute the movement. If muscles are not regularly stretched, they train to get shorter and finally restrict the range of movements. The stretchability of muscle is trainable to a certain extent. Therefore, it can be stretched to certain extent. The next point is internal environment. Internal environment of athlete influence the flexibility. For example, 10 minutes in a warm-up batch increases body temperature and flexibility whereas 10 minutes staying outside in 10 degrees Celsius reduces the body temperature and the flexibility too. The last point in flexibility is the previous injuries. Injuries to connective tissues and muscles can lead to thickening or fibrosing on the affected area. Fibrous tissues are less elastic and can lead to limb shortening and ultimately lead to reduced flexibility. Next important point is effect of exercises on cardiorespiratory system. After doing exercises for a long time, certain adaptations take place in our cardiorespiratory system. The various effects of exercise are increase in the size of heart, decrease in the resting heart rate, stroke volume increases at rest, increase in cardio output, increase blood flow, decrease in blood pressure, increase in blood volume, quicker recovery rate, increase in tidal air capacity. Tidal air capacity is amount of air that flows in and out of the lungs. In each quiet respiratory moment, but tidal air capacity is the amount of air that can be breathed in and breathed out over and above the tidal air by the deepest possible expiration respectively. It is estimated at about 500 to 800 cc. After doing regular exercise, it has been noted that the tidal air capacity can be increased. Then the decrease in the rate respiration. In certain that the that when beginners start to do exercise, his or her heart rate of the respiration increases. But when the same individual performs exercise on the daily basis, his or her rate of respiration at the rest decreases in comparison to that of the first day. Unused allopes become active, increase in the endurance, increase in the residual air volume, increase lung efficiency to deliver oxygen and remove waste products and gaseous exchange. Now in this, improvement in the lung efficiency causes oxygen to deliver more readily to working muscles and remove best products from the body. The number of alveolol in the lungs increases to enable more gas exchange to occur. More capillary are formed in the lungs over the time, allowing more blood flow out of the lungs. This improves the uptake of oxygen as there is greater surface area for the blood to bind with the hemoglobin. The next point is increase the vital air capacity. And thus, it is the amount of air which an individual can inhale and exhale with a maximum effort. Its capacity varies from 3500 cc to 4500 cc in a normal adult. It is the sum of tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume and expiratory reserve volume. With regular exercise, a person's capacity may increase up to 5,500 cc. And the last point is increase in the maximum oxygen uptake, VO2 maximum. Athletes need a constant supply of oxygen to muscles. This is known as oxygen uptake. The ma maximum oxygen uptake in a minute is called as VO2 max. 
regular exercise increases VO2 max. This were the various effects of exercise on the cardiorespiratory system. The color of the muscle is changed because a number of new capillaries are formed for a better and efficient blood circulation. Third point is muscle remains in tone position. When exercises are done on a regular basis, our muscles remain in tone position. In fact, muscle remains under some degree of contraction, muscle becomes firm and maintain a slight steady pull on the attachments. The fourth point is control extra fat. Regular exercise controls the extra fat of the body. Exercise burns the extra calories deposited in the form of fats. The fifth one is the change in the connective tissues. The connective tissues which connects fibers becomes powerful. These tissues can be, can be a stress of strenuous activities and can be extended up to some degrees. Efficiency in the movements of muscles. The movement of muscles become efficient and smooth. The movements during different activities become attractive. The seventh point is delay fatigue. Regular exercise delays fatigue. Fatigue is mainly due to the formation of carbon dioxide, lactic acid and acid phosphate. The accumulation of CO2 acid phosphate and lactic acid becomes less in an individual who exercises regularly. Hence fatigue can be delayed in exercises are performed daily. The eighth point is increase food storage. The food storing capacity is increased when regular exercises are done. The stored food can be utilized immediately whenever it is needed. The ninth one is exercise and its health benefits. Our body remains fit and healthy with increased blood circulation and oxygen intake. Regular exercise gives a healthy glowing look and is a natural anti-aging technique. It improves digestion, it helps in strengthening body muscles and thus attain a good posture. Exercises helps us to get good sleep and good look. Turn point is non-functioning fibers becomes active. When we do not do any strenuous work, all the muscle fibers of our body are at rest. In fact, these fibers do not do any work. But when we perform exercise regularly, the non-functioning fibers also begin to get active. Eleven point is the body posture remains correct. By doing regular exercise, the strength of the muscle increases, which in turn keeps the body posture in the correct position. Also, postural deformities do not occur. If there is any physical deformity, it is removed by doing regular exercise. Uh, the last point is improves reaction time. As a result of regular exercise, the speed of the nerve impulses increases, which ultimately improves the reaction time. Thus, nerve impulses move very quickly through motor nerves, from nerve system to the muscle fibers. Owing to this, the reaction time improves. And so, this was the effects of exercise on muscular system. The next point we are going to study is the sport injuries. In sport injuries, we are going to further study the classification, causes and prevention. So basically, we will start with sport injuries. What does sports injuries mean? Sports injuries are the common in the field of games and sports. During practice, training or competitions, any player can be injured. Perhaps there is no player who has not been injured during his sports career. Indeed, it is natural to get injured. Through coaches, physical trainers and sports doctors have been making their best possible efforts to prevent injuries. But they have not been completely successful so far. Though it is certain that with appropriate step, the chances of acquiring injuries can be reduced during the games. In fact, sports injuries can be prevented to a certain extent if proper research is conducted in the domain. During training and competitions, proper protective equipments must be used. Such players who do use protective equipment should not be allowed to participate in the sports competition. Proper conditioning should be done before taking part in sports competition. 
player as per rules should be allowed. Playing as per rules and proper officiating can be helped in preventing sports injuries. Warm-up should also be performed before training and competitions. The scientific knowledge of sports can also be beneficial in preventing sports injuries. To an extent, Leonardo da Vinci also told that if you are a norm of practice without scientific knowledge, you are just like a pilot who goes into the ship without rudder and compass and does not know his destination. It has been observed minutely that single type of injury does not occur in the games of sports. Indeed, some sports injuries can be prevented if some changes are made in the rules of the games and sports. Further, we are going to study about classification of sports injuries. Sports injuries can be classified as sports, so, that is soft tissue injuries, bone injuries, and joint injuries. In which first we are going to study about the soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries. There are following types of soft tissue injuries. Contusion, strands, pain, abrasion, bruises. So we'll start with contusion. Contusion is a muscle injury, a direct hit with or without any sports equipment can be the main cause of contusion. Contusion can also be due to the minor accident to the skin, such as falling, bumping into something or being hit or kicked. Contusion is common in boxing, wrestling and kabaddi. In contusion, blood vessels in the muscles are broken and sometimes bleeding may occur in the muscles, which may cause bruise. The raised area of contusion is due to the accumulation of blood and fluids from the injured blood vessels in the tissue. Stiffness and swelling are common features at the site of contusion. Sometimes, in such cases, muscles fail to respond. In severe cases, muscles become completely inactive. We will see the prevention of contusion. Proper warm-up is essential before practice, training and competition. All the parts of the body should be exercised properly. Strengthening, stretching should be performed during warm-up. Sports equipment of good quality should be used in the games of sports. Play field court should be smooth and clean. Players should be careful and alert during the practice and competition. Good officiating quality of the official is must for preventing sports injuries. Now we'll study about strength. Strain is also a muscle injury. Strain can, strain can be a mild as well as severe. Sometimes the complete muscle can be ruptured. In case of complete rupture, it is not possible to move that part of the limb. There may be severe pain around the rupture. Strain may occur at the time during the practice of competitions. As a matter of fact, strain is caused by twisting or pulling a muscle or tendon. It can also happen suddenly or develop over days or week. A sudden acute strain is caused by a recent injuries like lifting heavy objects or rod in the wrong way or overstressing the muscles. Chronic strains are usually caused by moving the muscles and tendons in the repetition. So what are the preventions? Conditioning should be done during the preparatory period. Sports equipment must be of good quality. The scientific knowledge of the game is must for preventing strain. Players should be careful and alert during the training of the competition. Players should discontinue to play during the state of fatigue. So this was about strain. Now we'll see the similar word to strain, that is brain. It is a ligament injury. It may occur due to the overstretching or tearing of ligament. Many things can cause sprain, falling, twisting, or getting hit can force a point out of its normal position. It can cause ligament around the joint to tear. Generally, sprain occurs at the wrist joints and ankle joints. Sometimes fractures is also possible along with sprain. 
In such injuries, swelling, inflammation, severe paining, and tenderness are common symptoms. There can be laxity in the ligaments, although above mentioned symptoms depend on the severity of the pain. The prevention are all the sports equipment must be of good quality. Play field court should be smooth and clean. Good officials should be there. Rules of the games must be followed. Players should be careful and alert during the practice, training and competition. Players should not continue to play in case of fatigue. Always try to eat a well-balanced diet to keep muscles strong. Maintain a healthy weight. Try to avoid falling. Wear shoes that fit well. Wear protective equipment when playing. Try to run on flat surface. The next point is abrasion. Abrasion is the majority, I mean the major injury. Abrasion usually occurs during, due to the friction with certain equipments or a fall over the area where the bone is very close. <coughs> when some falls or slides on the ground, layer of the skin rubs off due to the friction. It causes, occurs, <coughs> it usually occurs in a basketball court where the surface is slightly rough, although with this it can occur in kabaddi, athletics, hockey, football, etc. It is less severe than laceration and bleeding, if present in minimal. Mild abrasions are known as gaze or scratch. Preventions of abrasion. Players should undergo proper warm-up before training and competition. Players should perform proper conditioning during the preparatory phase. Sports equipment should be of good quality, good officials should be there, players should be careful and alert during the practice, should try to cover the exposed skin with a layer of clothing. Do not push your body behind the current fitness level. Learn the correct techniques before taking part in the sports. Second one is the bone injuries. There are various bone injuries that occur which are simple fractures, compound fractures, complicated fractures, grinstick fractures, comminuted fractures, impacted fractures. There are various causes of sports injuries which are improper conditioning, improper warm-up, unscientific way of training, lack of fitness, nutritional inadequate, lack of sports facilities, no use of protective equipment, practice during, due to the stage of fatigue, pressure of competition, carelessness during the games, recurrence of injuries, improper sports equipment, and so on. Prevention of sports injuries. The life of the sportsman is valuable. So, the prevention measures are the sportsman should do proper warm-up, proper conditioning, he should have a balanced diet. He should have a proper knowledge of sports and various skills. He should use protective equipments while practicing. Proper sports facilities should be provided to the sports person. Don't do overtraining. The sportsman should know that at what extent he should practice. Use of proper techniques, obeying the rules, proper cooling down are various preventive measures of the injuries. So these were the preventive measures in the sports injuries. Treatment of injuries. Treatment of soft injuries, bones and joint injuries are by simply prize. Prize means protect, rest, ice, compress and elevate. Use all these points for the treatment of sprain and strain. The next one is abrasion. It is clean with water, pure water, dry the affected area and apply the ointment. The third is laceration. Stop bleeding by pressure directly on the wound. Wash it with warm water. Use antiseptic ointment and then go to the hospital. Contusion. For contusion, the same as the thing, price. That is protect, rest, ice, compress and elevate. The last point at which we are going to study is first aid. 
in first aid we are going to study aims and objectives now firstly we will see the meaning of first aid every individual's life and work are closely related to his environment man has progressed in various fields of life such as industrialization mechanization transport and science therefore this age is called as electronic age or space age but on the other hand this development has created such conditions that a person may get injured anywhere and any time in spite of good measures at industrial safety and development of safety devices and techniques the number of accidents is still high in the industries and especially in day to day life indeed there is no definite time of such injuries this can happen to anyone anywhere at any time injuries usually occur in industries and on the farms during the repair maintenance and operation of vehicle of various kinds during games and sports and in various situations every day this often happens by accident so it is important to anticipate the time and place of an accident someone may be may get frustrated another may be bitten by snake so it can be said that every individual is trapped in one way or the other in fact it is very difficult to get medical aid to the victim at at the spot of the accident at the moment some immediate possible aid is required to the victim so the first aid is the first help which is given to the wounded or accidental victim before the arrival of the doctor in other words it is an immediate and temporary care given to the victim of an accident or sudden illness before the severe or physical or the physicians is obtained so now we'll study about the aims and objectives of first aid aims the main aim of first aid is to try to save the precious life of the wounded person or victim objectives of the first aid are to preserve life to preserve or save the life of the victim or a wounded person a significant objective of first aid however there are limitations of first aid but ever then every possible effort is done to save the life of the wounded person or victim with the help of first aid the second one is to alleviate pain and suffering the second important objective of the first aid is to alleviate pain and suffering of the victim or wounded person pain in a natural in any type of accident pain becomes unbearable in case of fractures or dislocations of the joints so it is a major objective to reduce such unbreakable pain third is to prevent the conditions for worsening till the wounded person or victim does not get help of a doctor to prevent the condition from worsening becomes major objective of the first aid fourth is to promote recovery the main objective of first aid is to start the process of recovery of as early as possible sometimes the treatment of the injury is also included in the objectives the fifth one is the produce early medical aid to procure early medical aid is one of the most important objective of first aid in fact there are many certain situations where there is a desire need for a medical assistance however the first aiders should pay attention to provide first aid to the victim or wounded person but efforts should also be made to seek medical aid as early as possible so this was all about the seventh chapter physiology and injuries in sport i hope you have understood all the points do study until then take care